Today's readings speak to us of the virtue of humility and the sin of pride. St. Augustine said it was pride that changed angels into devils. It is humility that makes men as angels. In fact, St. Augustine preached humility as so valuable to the person that he said that it was the indispensable foundation of human greatness. You see, St. Augustine knew what it meant to be proud, to have a false pride. Before his conversion and his turning his life over to Christ, Augustine believed that the ideal life was marked by power and success and self-sufficiency. After his conversion, he believed the ideal life was marked by humility. His life before conversion was marked by pride, a pride that kept him from seeking forgiveness, a pride that refused to look outward toward the other, a pride that revealed not so nice of a person. For Christ, as stated in today's gospel, the best way to live in this world is with humble hearts, humble hearts focused on our relationship with God. And St. Augustine agrees with that. He said further, if you should ask me, what are the ways of God? I would tell you that the first is humility, the second is humility, and the third is humility. Not that there are no other precepts to give, he says, but if humility does not precede all that we do, our efforts are meaningless. Augustine's fall from grace and then his reconciliation and conversion showed him a new way to live life. And he knew that being humble was the only way to follow Christ more closely. We know that many saints, other saints, have written and preached about humility. St. Teresa of Avila was one of them. And she said, it constantly happens that the Lord permits a soul to fall so that it may grow humbler. When the soul is honest and realizes what it has done and returns, it makes it ever increasing progress in our Lord's service. If we don't see the need for forgiveness in our own lives, if we don't see the need to be a better person, if we don't need to see the need to change, we start to believe that we're infallible. We look in the mirror of life and say, I'm perfect. Christ reminds us today that we are all fallible souls and we need to leave room in our lives for error. We will fall over and over again. We will be weak in our faith at times. We will be weak in our dealings with people in the areas of kindness and patience and jealousy. And we will be weak in our moral lives from time to time we will fall over and over again. But when we seek that reconciliation, when we accept the Lord's forgiveness and we realize that we need to change, then we embrace that virtue of humility and we progress closer to the Lord. I remember my grandmother would often say, swallow your pride occasionally it's not fattening. <laughs> Swallow your pride occasionally. It's not fattening. You know, as we look to fast during Lent, my grandmother might have had some good advice. Maybe not look at fasting from food, but rather fast from the things that harm us or make us sad, like pride. The way to being humble is by ridding ourselves, our hearts and our minds of selfishness and pride and giving of our time, our talent, and resources to others. And knowing deep down that the humble person is always aware that every breath we breathe, every moment we live, every gift we have is God's, God's gift to us. The humble person is always aware of that and grateful to God and having that attitude of gratitude in our heart for all that God has done for us. So with that gratefulness in our hearts, with prayer and repentance, 
we can make this time of Lent one when our pride takes a back seat. Instead of doing things that will exalt us, we can do things that will relieve the burdens of others. Rather than acting in self-serving ways, hoping to be noticed for our good works, we can seek to correct the injustices in our world. For God, we know, rejects the proud and raises up the humble. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. <laughs>